everybody, this is Troy with Ebo Central. Today we're taking a look at Draugr OS 7. It's based on Ubuntu long-term support, comes with the Xan Mod Kernel to help with gaming and performance. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, those links are in the description below. Draugr OS. If you download it, throw it on a USB, open it in a virtual machine, or in GNOME boxes, this is the screen you're met with. You've got one panel up top, then you've got your workspaces down here on the bottom, and you have a welcome screen. And to the left over here, you have a little dock that's got Steam, Play on Linux, and their software center. Right here at the welcome, we're going to start off. It's Draugr OS 7.5.1 Zombie. It says, welcome. Thank you for choosing Draugr OS. We hope you'll enjoy gaming on it as much as we enjoy developing it. Please make yourself familiar with the new features, layout, and documentation. Please don't hesitate to send us your feedback. It is greatly appreciated. And then it's got some things down here. You can go to the Draugr website, language support, view the README file, take the Draugr OS tutorial. That's for new users, accessibility options, keyboard shortcuts, find help if you want to donate to the development, all you got to do is click on that button and go over and help them out. Additional drivers, and then you can uninstall this welcome screen if you like. I always recommend to keep it. That way, if you have any questions or you need help in these areas, you can find it. But what I would do is go ahead and unclick that you want it to show at startup, and then you can close out of it. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to zip on over to their website. And you've got About Draugr OS. Draugr OS is a Linux desktop gaming operating system. It aims to provide a platform for gamers to use where they can get great performance without sacrificing their security. Furthermore, it aims to make it easy for anyone to game, whether they use a keyboard and mouse or some sort of controller. What is not Draugr OS? Draugr is not for everyday use. For this reason, it does not come with certain basic applications which are not needed for gaming, such as audio and video editing software, or an office suite. Furthermore, Draugr OS is not based on Arch, Fedora, or Solus, nor are there any plans to rebase to any of those distros. For various reasons for each distribution, most other distributions would not fit the desired outcome for Draugr OS. And it states, what is the vision for Draugr OS? It was created for several reasons, chief among them being that many of the mainstream options for gaming distributions were either abandoned, difficult to use, did not have a large or vocal community supporting them, or a combination thereof. Their main goal, keep it going, easy to use, grow the community, make it easy to contact support and development. And then, of course, it goes through development, contributing, system requirements, things of that nature. And then, of course, you could go up top and you've got home, my Draugr, download, about, blog, wiki, contribute, contact us. So let's go to the main page. This is the main page. Linux desktop gaming OS. Gaming the way it should be. Download now. And then it kind of goes over some of the enhancements. Draugr OS has an overhauled desktop. The Xanmod kernel for better graphics performance and enhanced multilingual support. A focus on security. Is it right for you? Support on a personal level. Open source, open minded. Check out our blog. One account for everything. With a My Draugr account, you get access to Draugr OS community where you can confer with developers and other Draugr OS users, as well as access to support the ticketing system and a convenient place to manage your blog post interactions. If you go up top, you've got about, we've already looked, blog, contact us, My Draugr, and then you do have forums. If you go over to the forums, there's the layout. You've got rules, news, introduce yourself, XFC environment, game compatibility, wine, play on Linux, hardware and drivers, general support. And you've got 678 members, 33 posts, 21 topics. So there's a good place right there that you can get information if you need it. And this is where you go to the homepage to download Draugr OS. I will include that in the description below. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close out of the web browser and go take a look at the operating system. Now, as you can see, you've got one panel up top like we were talking about. We're in a live mode. You've got your notifications. You've got sound, battery. It's not recognizing my laptop battery. And then internet. So let's right click, panel options, about, help, log out, panel preferences. I don't know about y'all, but it seems a little big up there to me. I'm going to make it just a tad bit smaller. 
there that looks a little better so but on your panel you can change the display size you can have appearance solid color do you want it to be something else you could change the color of the bar let's see if we can change it to that and there it changed it over to that so you've got different ways you can customize this that's completely up to you i'm going to go ahead and go back to pretty close to what we were and then items you can add things up here, everything from a whisker menu, notification, external area, separator, stuff like that. All you'd have to do is pick it, click on add, and it would add it to the bar up top. So we'll close out of that. And then, of course, you have your time and calendar. Then we'll come over here and open up the application menu. You've got terminal emulator. Let's go ahead and look at that. Let's see if they have HTOP installed. They don't. Let's see if they have top. They do. I do like the red text in there. It goes along with their theming. I like that. At present, I have two gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. We are running 455 megabytes at rest with the terminal open. That is impressive. I like that. That is lightweight. And that goes pretty much in line with most of the XFCE environments I look at. So let's minimize and close out of that. And go back over. Then we have our file manager. And the file manager opens up full screen. Let's go ahead and shrink that down a little bit. And this looks to be Nemo, but I am going to double check. And it is Nemo 4.4.2. So that's nice. You've got your usual suspects over here. You've got your regular home folders here. You can change the way they're viewed right here. Or you can grid them out. I'll leave it in grid. And if you want to, in Nemo, you have the ability to move these if you want. So let's say you wanted to move videos up top. Just come left click and hold, drag it up, and you could drop it up here. You'd have home desktop videos. So you can kind of rearrange that to the way you want. You can change it down here from folder view to tree view, or you could even go just a straight folder view. So let's go ahead and close. Let's go back to folders. And if you wanted to make these bigger or smaller, you do have a slider over here where you can adjust the size on that. So it's just a nice, light, quick, fast file manager that doesn't get in your way and lets you get your work done. So let's close out of that. Then you have a mail reader, and it seems you'd have to download one. There's not one downloaded, so we will close out of that. And then we shall go back up top. We've already looked at the web browser. So accessories, you got archive manager, Compton, files, play on Linux, wine tricks, games. You've got Game Hub, all your games in one place. Let's take a look at that. This is just a hub. If you have Steam installed, if you've got GOG, Humble Bundle, or install itch.io, if you've got them, all these games that you have on all these different providers will actually show as one list up in here. And then when you click on the game in here, it would actually launch it in its proper launcher. So let's close out of that. Back over to Games. And you do have Lutris as well, which is an open source gaming platform, and it is starting. And as you can see, Lutris has opened. You can move it over here. And it's another library type situation where you can go in and check games, recent, favorites. You've got uh, sources. You can have Lutris as a source, GOG, Humble Bundle, and Steam. And then, of course, your runners, which would be Wine, Steam, and Linux. Any games that you download would all be here. You could launch them from here. You can download them and things like that. If you went to sources like Community Installers for Lutris, you could see that. Or you could go to your library. So you have a lot of different ways in here that you can download games and store them and then be able to have them in a library where they're easy to access and easy to use instead of having to go to every different single launcher. So let's close out of that. Go back over to Games. And then, of course, you would have Steam. And then down on graphics, you got Document Viewer, Flameshot, Internet, Firefox Web Browser, we already saw, Steam, Multimedia, Audacious, Cheese, MPV Media Player, Pulse Audio Volume Control, Office, Other, Draugr Welcome Screen, and then Settings. Additional Drivers, Appearance. Let's look at Appearance. Okay, right now you got the United Ubuntu Alt Dark Style. You could change that if you want. I'm going to leave it, and then, of course, you can change your icons right here, your fonts. If you want your fonts a little bigger, you can change them by DPI scaling, or you can just go up and click on it, choose the font you wanted. Once you have that chosen, come down here and change the size of the font. Let's bump it up to 12, hit select, and as you can see, everything got a little bigger. And then settings, of course. Menus and buttons, show images on the buttons. If you look down here at your buttons, they got images. If you click that... The images disappear and it's just a button. So I'll go ahead and click that back on. Uh, 
event sounds, and then window scaling. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back up to settings. Then you've got color profiles, Bluetooth manager, display, firewall configuration, keyboard, mouse and touchpad, notifications, panel, power manager, preferred applications, printers, settings editor, settings manager, software, and updates. Let's see what kind of software center we have. And as you can see, it gives you editor's picks, recommended productivity applications, recommended audio and video applications, or you can just do a simple search, something for like uh, Caden Live. And as you can see, you've got two different versions. If we click on the first version, let's scroll down, and it is Snapcraft. So this is a snap pack for your first version. And then if you look at the second, it's more than likely directly from the repository source Ubuntu Focal. Yes, so that's from that. But that's where you go to download your software. We will close out of that. Let's go back to settings. Synaptic Package Manager. Okay, guys, I finally got Synaptic Package Manager to open. On the password, I tried Live, I tried Root, I tried Draugr. None of them worked. The password, if you download this and you're running it on a USB and you're asked for a password, it's not R-O-O-T. It's T-O-O-R. Tor with two O's. So it's Root spelled backwards. But Synaptic Package Manager, you just come in here. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, but if you're not, this is just another way to get packages, software, and apps. Let's say you were looking for something in the video realm. Let's go down to video. Let's just pick video software. So let's do a search for OBS. As you can see, our highlighted search is right here. And if you come to your right, there's OBS Studio, Plugins, Build. All you'd have to do is come over here and click on OBS. Mark for installation. Then it's going to give you a list of dependencies that OBS requires. You would just click mark. That marks them all. And it says it's ready for installation. And you would just click apply. Now, I know they said on their website that this isn't a day-to-day -day distribution. It's been built for gaming. But it does have the Xan Mod kernel. So, I mean, you could probably go in and download your LibreOffices, your video editing software, and get a lot of work done with this distribution, even though it's centered around gaming. Just remember that. So let's close back out of that. So we'll go back to settings. And you've got time and date, user group, window manager, and workspaces. And system, you've got Bleachbit, Draugr installer, play on Linux, printers. So that was a quick look at Draugr OS. Gaming, the way it should be, just like the website says. Is this a distribution that you might give a try? Download it, throw it on a USB, or put it in a virtual machine? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee. Or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.